Harry relegated to the cellar for his latest Zoom call. Meghan's plan of selling linen and not jam revealed. And an update on Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and how she really feels about how half the world has gone insane about her Mother's Day photo. This and more on today's show. Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And we need to kick off this show with the truth. Most Sausage Squad members thought that Megan was going to have at least 1 million followers on Instagram in the first 24 hours. I mean, that is the minimum standard when a celebrity of moderate status joins a social media channel. And everyone finds out by surprise. But after 24 hours, I am amused to announce that the Duchess project hasn't even broken the 400k followers. Most probably by the time that you will be watching this video, she must have broken that 400k follower barrier, but it's still a far cry from the 1 million followers that her fans expected it to be. You know how important are the first 24 hours, right? But Megan's shields, such as People Magazine, want to make it seem like gaining 370k followers overnight is an amazing achievement, including among those new followers, Chris Jenner and Abigail Spencer. My theory is that from the get-go, the American Riviera Orchard is a bit complicated for word-of-mouth propagation, and we already see headlines of people noticing this, specialists in brand and image and PR, that this is a risky move because it's a mouthful, don't you think? In fact, that American Riviera Orchard sounds 100% like a Lana Del Rey album. I'm a huge Lana fan, many of you already know it, and you know that Lana has those long Americana albums and singles titles that is almost a staple of her creativity. Most people are guessing that Megan is not really going to use the American Riviera Orchard brand on her products, and I'm about to talk about Megan's products in a minute, but she's going to use the acronym Arrow. Now, it's interesting that Arrow is already a bulk-sized shopping brand in Latin America, and as some of my rogues on X already mentioned, that in Romania and in other countries of Europe as well. So make of that what you will. Maybe Arrow at some point will sue Megan if she dares to use the same brand for similar products. But before we talk about... Megan's products. I want to share with you this meme because the first thing that I that went through my mind when I saw that Megan was back on Instagram is that the first update of that account was going to be her recollection of the dishwasher soap commercial and resting old face on X took notice that the dishwasher in that commercial, the brand, is ivory. And it's so interesting that this could be the source of Megan's obsession with beige. I mean, ivory is a thing, beige is another thing, but don't you tell me that it's a bit of a coincidence because those two colors are quite close together, if, if, if you know what I mean. For obvious reasons, I'm sure that Megan listened to that song Ebony and Ivory a lot when she was young. Perhaps she identified more with the ivory part? Well, you tell me. But we need to talk about very good news. Uh, the good news is that Megan's products are going to be a permanent source of jokes and memes and humor, at, at least on this channel. I guarantee you that. And how can I guarantee it? Because I just saw this headline, What Will Megan Markle's New Brand Sell? Inside the trademark for American Riviera or Todd. And I'm sure you could be way more interested on uh, watching paint dry than knowing what is Megan going to sell because I know that you're not going to buy whatever Megan is going to sell. But believe me, this is going to be fun. But let's see. According to the application, which was filed on February 2 and is pending review by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, American Riviera Orchard has listed a slew of items under goods and services. The list includes tableware, table cutlery, downloadable and printed cookbooks and recipe books, 
coffee and tea services in the nature of tableware, serving ware, decanters, dinnerware, chargers, napkin rings, table place card holders, beverage wagery, textile tablecloths, placemats and napkins, kitchen and table linens, uh, gift wrap of fabric, plus food. It's like Megan wants to play the perfect housewife or something like that, which I think she could fool people back then playing the avant-garde influencer with the TIG. But I don't think that she can pull off the Americana classic housewife stand. And on a related note, you know that I joke a lot with these AI images. This is, in this case, Megan as a classic Americana housewife. But what is a bit unsettling is that mid-journey, the tool that I used to generate these pictures came up all by itself with this painting in the background. Isn't that fascinating? Can you make out what is in that painting? I know, creepy. But well, uh, that set of food includes jellies, jams, fruit preserves, edible oils and fats and preserves, vegetable-based spreads, legume-based spreads, nut-based spreads, garlic-based spreads, sesame-based spreads, dairy-based spreads, nut butters, fruit butters. And thanks to Send Mom, we have perhaps the worst example of what Megan could have on her pantry. Harry's Nut Butter. I have, uh, I have no further comment about this. It, it's hard to elaborate without becoming nauseous. American Riviera Author also intriguingly asks for retail store services featuring foods, books, tableware, and tablescape goods, table linens, and serving ware, online retail store services featuring food and beverages, books, tableware, and tablescape goods, table linens, and serving ware, possibly hinting that wares will be rolled out across brick and mortar stores. The application's last request is for online ebooks relating to cookbooks and recipe books. The document lists the owner as Mama Knows Best based in Beverly Hills. But now there's the best explanation as to why the discount duchess was at the farmer's market with that oversized purse or, or bag. It wasn't just for the speed dial paps. She was, as resting doll face says, she was probably stealing ideas of what types of jams and jellies to make for the well-to-do Santa Barbara crowd. She was doing market research or planning to plagiarize every single jam and jelly in Santa Barbara. Now, it's more than obvious that Megan's plan all along was to crash the Diana Legacy Award. The same award that her husband was going to present together with William, of course, but not simultaneously. And anyway, it's really crass timing that she had to release her new Instagram venture the same day of such an important date for the man that she allegedly loves. This is just a testament to Megan's calculating nature and that she just cannot stand to not dominate headlines in one way or another. She always needs to make everything about herself. That's an absolute must. That's something that is never going to change. Like, it's never going to change the quality of the cameras that Harry uses for his Zoom videos. In this case, for the Diana Legacy Award. And we don't know why he was recording from the cellar. I mean, didn't they have this shared office with all those stacks of the bench? Until some time ago, Harry still had permission to have his Zoom calls from the main office. But I guess that he now has some sort of man cave and if you look closely, you see that there's a bunch of cowboy hats hanging on the wall. Well, maybe Harry is a fan of Brokeback Mountain and he keeps those hats just to play and fool around when Nacho is visiting. Or maybe when Marcus is visiting. I don't know how many friends you can play the cowboys with. But anyway, Harry looked quite dark. Not only with that dark jacket, but the lighting. Well, it did not help much that the camera quality was bad as well. Worse yet is that while William made sure to bring a written speech to the event, which is the right thing to do, Harry decided to just wing it. 
And just to be fair, if you're a great public speaker, you can just wing it and that would be awesome. In fact, the length of this, this could have been practiced in many ways so Harry could have memorized it and shine on that Zoom call or better yet, you can have a teleprompter because you're on a Zoom call, you can have your script in front of you, but no, Harry did not need any script. Harry was a natural and naturally, this was awful. I'm going to read just a small portion of this. Cringe alert. I'm sorry, I am not there. I wish I could be there with you guys. So much of the future depends on you guys. Some of the work you do may feel as though you're small. Some of it is big, but the impact, again, that you're having on hundreds of thousands, millions of people. You don't need me to tell you that, but I want to tell you that. Every single day you are working on these things and you do not know the impact you're making. Again, this is just terrible. I don't want to give Harry or Archwell any ideas, but you can just write a script, write a speech and have it in front of you as you're addressing people because you're not having a conversation with them. You're just addressing them and that way you don't have to embarrass yourself with sentences such as My mom will be incredibly proud of all the work you have done. I am incredibly proud and thank you for doing all the work you have done. That is embarrassing even for elementary school children. Not to mention that the difference in presence of both brothers was staggering. William, front and center, hands-on with everyone present, was just amazing. Harry, well, was relegated to the basement, the cellar, or the man cave, whatever. We still don't know, but he looked really blurry, of course, and let's say small in that room. Even if the TV set was quite big, I, I must say. And together with his broken speech, uh, it was not the fairest comparison to make. But it's a comparison that I'm willing to make anyway. And this is something that was not on my 2024 bingo card. Giles Corrin, the guy who created the rumors of William's affair, and he already said that he made that up, just exploded on social media yesterday because he's fed up of being asked the same question over and over again. And he started upsetting the record straight over and over again that it was all made up. Well, when he exploded this time, he tweeted this. I wasn't coming back from Soho House. I was coming back from the Ritz, where I'd been shagging Megan in her room while Harry was in the shower. Soho House was later, but it was the Amsterdam one. We smoked a load of... and then had a threesome. You've got to get this stuff right. So he just exploded out of the blue, and I don't know. I would make myself a shirt with this. That's what I, I should be doing because this was glorious. I can just imagine the meltdown of the sausage squad after reading this because if they claim that Giles Corrin was telling the truth back then when he talked about William's alleged affair, then he must be telling the truth as well right now, which could be quite outrageous. But as we know, uh, this is just plain old and very spicy satire. We can just laugh what we remind the world that whatever comes out of Giles Corrin's mouth is, well, it's not a grain of salt. It's a whole bag of salt that you have to take it with. But now let's talk about Catherine. Because a lot has happened since her and William's update on that Mother's Day photo that quite literally broke the internet. So the first thing that everybody noticed is that the media went insane about this. And by insane, I mean all of them showed their true colors. Because it was not only that silly killed notice from Associated Press, because this has gone as far as the French News Association together with the BBC to claim that Kensington Palace is not a trusted source of images. Now give me a break. These people are acting as if nobody in this era edits or manipulates or modifies anything, and that is simply asinine for the sole reason that at no point 
Catherine's photo for Mother's Day was published as an editorial picture. It was not going to be sold. It was not going to be featured in uh, Getty Images or anywhere else. So the photo was taken and edited exactly the same way any other family would do it. Take various pictures of the same group and just arrange it and copy paste in a way that you have a master with the best faces of each child. And the photo itself is a kind gesture that Catherine wanted to show that day. Now, the level of insanity is an understatement. Insanity is an understatement when you find out that Instagram, perhaps the social media channel with the most edited, manipulated, modified images in the universe, not only the world, the, the universe, they added an annotation to William and Catherine's picture. Now, the picture had been manipulated. Instagram. What kind of hypocrisy is that? Why don't they add that notification to every other celebrity picture that is uploaded to that bastion of narcissism and fakery? But the people closer to William and Catherine have taken it the right way or in other ways with humor. King of Netherlands makes cheek a dig at Catherine's Photoshop scandal as he jokes with the public. Well, let's see. Uh, footage shows King William, who became monarch in April 2013, talk to a little girl who is thought to say in Dutch words to the effect of, I have a photo with your f whole family. To which the king is alleged to reply, Really? At least I didn't Photoshop it! Or words to that effect. This is greeted with laughter by the crowd at the event, which appears well attended by a group of children wearing hats and waving Dutch flags. Well, dear William Alexander, I hope that the photo of your family that the girl was talking about was not this one, because I have news for you. This is still smells like the skin smoothing stool, so, well, I, I guess it was a joke after all. So, it's no wonder that every single tabloid and dubious reputed media in the world has jumped on the Kate Middleton conspiracy bandwagon. Because you can imagine the amount of clicks and ad revenue that it generates. And the theories are nothing short of vicious. But I guess that if you are watching my channel, it's because you're a fan of the Prince and Princess of Wales. So I have good news for us. Catherine is not bothered by this, in the least. Because why would she? Not gonna lie, I'm a perfectionist. I've been working on image editing software for 30 years, so I must confess that I had a knee-jerk reaction to the photo. Yes, someone else with far more experience could have polished Catherine's Photoshop work. And so, upload a perfect, flawless picture. But this uproar is not really about the picture. Because this is what I think now. If they had uploaded a perfect photo, or maybe a photo with zero editing, the media would have looked for anything else to make a scandal out of it. I don't know. William was wearing a red pocket handkerchief today. That goes against royal tradition. Whatever. I I'm making up things. This is only that they cannot stand, or, or a better word, understand that someone asks for privacy because she is recovering from surgery, Kensington Palace already says that everyone should wait at least until after Easter, and then, effectively, she remains private. Shocking, right? Very different from the worldwide privacy tour couple, who claim privacy, but they don't really seem to grasp what it entails. So I understand it now. William and Catherine wanted to have this lovely gesture for everyone on Mother's Day. And it is a lovely gesture, and that lovely gesture didn't need to fulfill the requirements of editorial images, because it was not meant to be an editorial image. It was just a family photo that they were sharing. Nobody was forced to publish it on their websites. So yes, like so many of you said, you were right. All these outlets are mad as hell that William just cut the middleman and he published the image himself. 
edited or not. That just doesn't matter. That is not relevant whatsoever. So for all those claims that Catherine is worried, that she is anxious of what happened, none of that is true. Because the media would have fabricated an outrage out of anything else. This would have happened in one way or another, no matter what William and Catherine had done. And no, they didn't really make any mistake. This was... This is like complaining about a gift. They gave us a gift, and some people, precisely the people that this gift was not meant for, began complaining. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Remember that a lion is not concerned about the opinion of sheep. But again, I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. My royal rogues, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue, and remember... Much love and bliss.